the new rule. You know, you look out there, there's so many laws and rules that drive you crazy. Here's one rule that Paul taught to the church, the called out assembly. See if you can catch it. You'll find peace in your life. Galatians chapter 6, verses 15 to 17. From the King James Version for those that uh, don't like any other translation. For in Christ. Catch that. For in Christ. Outside that, forget this. In Christ. Neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision. What's the rule? A new creature. A new creation. That's what Paul taught the churches. That called out a sentence from the secular religious world. They didn't listen to the laws and rules of the secular religious world. They listened to Christ in them. For in Christ, neither circumcision of hell anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature, a creation. As many as walk according to this rule. How about walking in the spirit? The mind of Christ in you? The spirit of that. The mind of that spirit. Peace be on them. Mercy. Upon the Israel of God. From henceforth let no man trouble me. There won't be trouble. They can think they trouble you. But their laws and rules of their particular race, cultures and creeds, religious creeds, denominational creeds, opinions and ideas, which you should, you ought, and if I were you, I would. But henceforth let no man trouble me. For I bear my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. I've been identified with death, burial, and resurrection. Because he identified the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and followed Christ in him, he physically bared the marks. Imagine that. Thank God you got laws and rules today that protect you, so they may not have to, they may not agree with you. But it's getting slow to the point where it's well, you see what's happened today. They don't agree with you. They'll beat you. So let's move on here. And what I'm doing right now, any of you could do. You don't really need me to do this. Christ in you could help teach you to do this. He said the word to me, rule. So I said, what do you mean by rule? He said, look it up. So I went to Bible Gate. Typed in the word rule. And you see it. So you can do this yourself. You don't need me. I'm not your teacher. He's your teacher. Christ in you. Listen to Christ in you. You don't need no man to teach you no more. Now we can share things with one another. Like I'm doing right now. All I'm doing right now is sharing what the Spirit of Christ in me told me to do. And this is what I've done. And it's, my oh God, it was interesting. I said, my, I never saw this before. There's only one rule. I mean, that's easy. About the easiest thing you ever get. It also will include, take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for my burden is light. If you're on rest for your weary soul. How did Jesus learn? He gave the example over and over and over again. The words I speak are not my own. My actions are not my own. I see the Father, I hear the Father. I see what I see, what I hear. He tells me what to speak, he tells me what to do. That's about as easy as it'll ever get. I mean, that's been available to us for most of our lives. And we've been following the dictates of people, places, and things. Their opinions and ideas and trying to stand on our head to please everything and everybody. Those expressions, you can please some of the people at some time, but you can't please all the people all the time. You don't have to. Who do you please? Christ in you. I mean, God, this is about the easiest thing I ever heard in my life. I said, God, I've been laboring like a fool, following the dictates of race, cultures, and creeds, and all the religious denominations that drive me nuts. Family, friends, work associates, 
If I were you, I would, I ought. You should. You hear that, you run. Someone's trying to bring you under their control. I don't need your control. But the love of Christ controls me, keeps me from considering you any other way. I go with what he's offered. Christ in me. The hope of being restored to the lost glory of Adam. I mean, you want to labor under the illusion of other people's opinions and ideas? Now, I get these things, and I find out I'm not alone in this. The whole same spirit of Christ in me speaks to other brothers and sisters in Christ. They're getting the same thing. So the next text is Philippians 3.16. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Paul said, let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. And that mindset was never acting in penitent for Father. He would wait to his spirit. The Father would talk to Christ in him because he is the Son of God. He listened to the Father's voice to the Son of God that who he was in him. Never acting in penitent for the Father. He became obedient. Colossians 3.15 let the peace of God, what's peace? Hear his voice. Follow Christ in you. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. I mean, you think of rule, you think of labor and work. Now this is easy stuff. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To the which also you are called in one body. Be ye thankful. My God, thank God. I mean, there's only one body. It's not so subdivided, split all up into various factions. One faith, one Lord, one baptism, one body, one mind. I mean, get in this, there's peace. Romans chapter 7, verse 23, the Amplified Version. But I see a different law and rule of action in the members of my body and his appetites and desires, waging war against the law of my mind, the mind of Christ. And so doing me, making me a prisoner of the law of sin, acting independent from God, which is within my members, going with old methods and ideas. I mean, old lamps were new. New way compared to the old way please one person Christ in you I mean that's about the most easiest thing I ever heard 1st Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6 Amplified yet we do speak wisdom among those spirits matured if your spirits matured you can hear this is wisdom it ain't come from me it's come from Christ in me Yet we do speak wisdom among those spiritually mature, believers who have teachable hearts and a greater understanding. Remember, cleanse the heart, purify the heart. But it is a higher wisdom, not the wisdom of this present age, nor of the rulers and t leaders of this age who are passing away. The wisdom has been proven to be foolishness. You go see following foolish people, secular religious opinions and ideas. You got the greatest wisdom going. Christ is in you. If you get into that mind, and you're in that mind, I'm in that mind, and those that we fellowship with are in the same mind, I mean, there's peace there amongst us. There's a fellowship of the mystery. Christ in you. The mystery. First Corinthians chapter seven verse seventeen. Only let each one live the life which the Lord has assigned him and to which God has called him, for each person is unique 
and is accountable for his choices and conduct, let him walk in this way. This is the rule I make in all the called out assembly of churches. Now our fear of giving up our mind and joining this one mind, he get scarecrows, devil scarecrows like the Buddhists that teach that you're like a drop of water then you fall into the mighty ocean of God and you get sucked in. You become non-existence. And the guru runs everything. You have no mind. We're not saying that. Paul's saying that right here. That each lived the life which the Lord has assigned him. And to which God has called him. May God give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of your heart might be open. You might know the hope of your calling. Specific tasks. If he calls you to do something, not only will he give you the desire to do it, according to Philippians, but he also gives you the power to perform that which is asked. Because really, it ain't you. It's him through you. Working out Christ in you to that specific task that he's called you to do and nothing more. I got if each one of us would see this, take up his or her specific task that God's given him in this life, and everyone would perform, we wouldn't have the argumentation that the Church of Corinth had. I'm a Paul, I'm a Paulus, I'm a Peter. And Paul says, you know, what do you have you haven't received? If you received it, how can you boast blow do you need to receive? One plant, one water. But he who plants, he waters nothing. It's God through the planter. It's God through the one who waters. It's God through you. You're vessels only. If he would catch that drift, they wouldn't have this preaching out of contention, each one trying to be above the other. Follow Christ in you. You can't, I mean, can you boast and brag? Well, God says, open your mouth, I'll speak. Walk over there and then I'll do. Can you take credit for that? People do that. Oblivious to the fact that God is speaking to them and they plagiarize what God has given to them. Imagine that. You can't take no credit. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. None of the rulers of this age recognized and understood this wisdom. They don't want to follow that. They want to go with their intellectual wisdom now. They acquired to schools, the peers. None of the rulers of this age recognized and understood this wisdom for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I mean, that shows how dumb the devil is. You follow the devil, you end up in ignorance. You fall right into God's hands every day. <laughs> now, you think you're trying to undo what God's done? No. You can't be outwitted. In Christ, following the teachings, the direction, and the wisdom of the Father, you are outwitted with them, with them every time. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 15. Not boasting of things without measure, that is, of other man's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased that you may be enlarged by that we may be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. One rule. Live out a new creation, Christ in you. I mean, if everyone would do that, each would take his part. I wouldn't be building the labors of another man. It's that part which God's called me to do. I'm not sitting here trying to compete with you trying to outperform me in whatever specific task that you're doing. I'm doing my part. You do your part. The competition goes out the window. And when each of us do this, more comes. We get more knowledge. He increases everything. When your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by, that we may be enlarged by you, according to our rule, abundantly. The rule he gave to the churches. Everyone in the church would take his part. 
and we would grow together, not compete against each other. Same area, Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse thirteen, a couple of verses prior to this. But we will not boast of things without measure. God measures it out. God speaks. God does. It's God who gives the increase. But we will not boast of things without measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God has distributed to us, a measure to each to reach even unto you. Follow the one rule. I mean, you can't get no easier than that. One rule. Follow Christ in you. You have a fellowship of Christ in you. Let me end this with the last verse. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses uh, 24. After that comes the end. Completion. When he hands over the kingdom to God the Father. That's the Son. After he had made inoperative and abolished every ruler and every authority and every power. To God be the glory of great things he has done. So loves he the world that he gave his son. Now you get down and think about it. It comes down now. How about Jesus? Well, Father, I did quite a bit here. He don't compete with the Father. The Father and the Son and the Spirit are one. Perfect unity and diversity. Not one trying to rob the other. As that comes the end, completion, when his hands over the kingdom to God the Father. After he had made inoperative and abolished every ruler and every thought and power. All power to the Father. When Jesus was here in the flesh, I brought this out in the other videos. He didn't depend upon the power that he had as the Son of God. He was subservient to God the Father. Perfect example to all of us. Each one competing against each other. No, he didn't. He could have said, well, I don't need your help, Father. I got all this answered to myself. No, he became a real son of man. Came dependent upon the Father. Set aside the independent use of his attribute being the Son. We, as sons of God, set aside the independent use of using that attribute being sons of God amongst ourselves and between us and God. And we're dependent upon Christ in us to lead us guide us, to speak when they say speak, to do when he says do, not independent from that, well I don't need that, I got all power in me, I'm a son of God, are you now you don't get glorified now, that day comes like Jesus has said I brought this out in the other video now glorify me with the glory we had in the beginning, while here in the flesh though he possessed it while here he never used it, he never acted independent from the father and at the end of this whole seven years, seven thousand year period, from beginning of time to the end of the millennium, at the end of the millennium, he hands it back to the Father. Because right now, all power was given to the Son, the Son of Man, Jesus. But at the end of this whole mess here, he gives power back to the Father. They share in the glory of it all. God the Father. To God be the glory, great things he's done, so loved he the world that he gave us his Son to yield in our life an atonement for sin and open the life gates that all may come in. I mean, if he, not, if he got out there trying to promote himself, never act in penitent for Father. Yet here we are to pr promoting ourselves, promoting our denomination, not following Christ in us. Our God, you want a unity? Preserve the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. A peace that passes all the misunderstanding of all these denominations, bases, cultures, and creeds. And see yourself in Christ, in the spirit, from the Father's viewpoint. Now, what did he accomplish here? That's what he wanted. But you have to lose to gain that. Let me close with this example. I'd ask the Lord today, what do you want to say and do to this vessel? What you just heard was what he wanted to say and do to this vessel, me, Paul Woodard. 
after I did this, and I'm ending it right now, and I said to him, well, what else do you want to do? He said, that's it for today. Stay in Christ. It doesn't get any easier than that, brothers. So I hope you got something out. That's a little more to this matter of Christ in us. God bless you.